Hello everyone, welcome to Selenium Hands-on Training. So in this video, we'll be discussing about a quick overview of Selenium, which is an automation tool. So this is the agenda of the video. First, we'll be starting with what is automation testing. Then we'll see a quick introduction about what is Selenium. There are various tools available in Selenium. We'll have an overview on that. Then we will be specifically focusing on Selenium WebDriver. So what is WebDriver is all about. Then let's see how to do the setup in our Eclipse to do execute any Selenium project. Then we will be executing a sample Hello World program using Selenium. All right, so before going to what is automation testing, let's quickly recap what is testing. I hope you are already aware of what is software testing. So software testing is nothing but verifying or meeting the requirements. So whenever there is a new application or whenever there is a change in existing application, the idea of the implementing the change, we have to test whether the application is meeting the requirements or not. You know, we have different types of applications like web application, Windows applications, mobile applications, etc. So ideally there are two types of majorly requirements we will be checking. One is functional requirement, which is related to the functionality of the application. Like this is how it has to be like that or non-functional requirement. What it, it means, sometimes the application should respond as quickly as possible. And there should be SLA like within 10 milliseconds, it should be loaded. And within an hour, it should process X number of transactions. Like that performance related requirements will usually come under non-functional requirements. So using our automation tools, we will be able to test both functional as well as non-functional requirements. So for testing functional requirements, we are using different tools like Selenium, LeanFT, UFT, Tasca. And as for testing non-functional requirements, we have performance testing tools like LoadRunner, JMeter. So, the ultimate aim why we are doing testing, software testing is to have some search test criteria. It should be either pass or fail. That's how the result will be. If the testing is meeting the requirements, then we will be making it as pass. And if the results, whatever the outcome of our testing is not meeting the requirements, then we will be marking our test case or scenario as fail. And we all know how the testing life cycle will be. Usually it is starting in a requirement phase where the business analyst or product owner is defining some requirements. Then developers start working on the development of requirement. At the same time, testers will start working on the test design of the test cases. Then as soon as developers start developing application, they will be sharing the application for testing. Then testers start executing their developer test cases. So there might be multiple environments and multiple levels of testing available. So developers, they themselves will do testing, which is called a DIT testing. Then we will be having testing environments at multiple levels, which might be like SIT testing or UAT testing, system integration testing or user experience testing. Finally, they will deploy the application to the production environment for users. So in the production phase as well, we will be continuously monitoring whether there is any issue is coming in the application. In that case, we will be immediately fixing the issue, testing it, and then again, deploying it in the production. That is how the entire testing life cycle will be. And there are different types of testing we know. So 
first one is unit testing unit testing is nothing but developer is testing his own code using some piece of test case or code which is called unit testing then there is something called smooth testing which is just to verify the stability of the application then there is something called a sanity testing so whenever there is a major change in application before starting our testing we will be testing the basic or essential functionalities of the application say i'm going to test any application say shopping application or a banking application so first i will test the login functionality as a sanity testing because without that we can't proceed with the actual testing itself then there is something called functional testing where i will be majorly focusing on what all the changes made in the application and i'll be testing that changes alone it can be existing changes or other addition of new features as well then there is something called a defectory testing so during functional testing as a tester we usually raise some defects and developers will analyze the defects and they will have to provide some fixes to the defects so that application will work as per the defined functionality so after they are providing some defects we have to retest the same test case whichever failed earlier so now the idea is it has to be passed so that i will ensure that the fix provided by the developer is correct or not next one is regression testing so say there is a application there are some 10 or 15 existing functionalities available and i am going to add a two more new functionalities in that application so the new functionalities i already developed as a part i tested as a part of functional testing but just to ensure that because of the addition of new functionalities there is no any new defect introduced in the existing functionality so some critical part of existing functionalities to be tested whenever there is addition of new functionality that kind of testing is called regression testing in regression testing we will just test the existing behavior of the application and ensure nothing is changed so other than that we will be categorizing the testing under different categories like block box testing white box testing and gray box testing without knowing what is the back end code if you are doing some testing it's called a block box testing if you are directly testing the branches of the code like line coverage branch coverage that is under white box testing but as a tester we usually we will not do that gray box testing mostly involves both block box testing as well as the code or a database related testing suppose i am verifying the database entries along with the functionalities by performing some action in the front end so in that case we can call it as a gray box testing which is a combination of both block box testing and white box testing so this is a quick recap of what is testing and types of testing and what we are doing in our testing now let's move to what is automation testing so to verify the functionality by performing some action till now what we were discussing it's about some tester is sitting in front of the computer and doing the testing but currently there are some softwares available and we just have to instruct software that hey please do this action and there will be some output outcome will come you have to compare the outcome with predefined outcome or output and obviously if the output is same make the test case as pass if the output is different then make the test case as fail like that we can define in the software itself so in the automation testing there are different tools available and uh, they themselves will take care of the entire testing execution process it's exactly the replacement for a human who is doing the testing manually and what the tool will perform they additionally perform test data management like they can generate own test data or they can read it from any excel sheet or sources 
and uh, they will be doing testing of course they will be comparing the results they will be creating a detailed report as, a, as per our wish maybe a excel sheet report or a html report with a proper screenshots and obviously of course because of this testing automation testing implementation so much of effort by the tester is saved also money wise it's again saved so if you ask me why we need automation testing means as i was telling in the previous slide there is a testing phase called regression testing where whenever there is a change in new application i have to again and again test the existing functionality of the application so to do the same test case execution on a same application multiple times it's a repetitive and hectic process right so just to avoid that repetitive process we are automating that process only once and whenever there is a requirement we will be just executing that automated test cases so that uh, time effort money everything is saved so nowadays it's a very much important and we can say it's a trending that any new development and testing is having definitely an automation tool involved for their testing and also it's very accurate and uh, less error while testing and uh, can have any complex testing performed using tools now let's move to what is selenium so we will be going to focus on selenium selenium is an automation tool it's an open source automation tool what i mean open source means anyone can use that without any licensing cost and anyone can contribute to that code documentation it's a, the source code itself available in the github repository so it started in the year 2004 so it was created by a company called thoughtworks and later as it is a open source software it's being supported by various organizations so if we go to the selenium website it's being supported by multiple organizations if you scroll down here they are the sponsors of selenium and also if you want we can also do donate for selenium because it's a open source project and the next point is it's primarily used to automate the testing in web application so we all know what is web application it's an application that we are accessing through a web browser we will be having a browser we will be having some url to uniquely identify an application and when we are connected to the internet through browser we will be able to access the application so this is suitable for testing web applications and why it's so popular if you ask currently it's supporting approximately 10 different programming languages and if you ask me officially there are majorly five different programming languages so if i go to downloads it is showing these are all the major five programming languages where it's having the documentation then what else it's supporting five different browsers as well so what are all the browsers if you if we go and see inside this it's supporting firefox edge chrome opera as well as apple safari so we can test in all these type of browsers now it's having different components so what are all the components one is selenium web driver which we are going to mostly use it for our testing purpose there are also two other components available here if you see it's a selenium ide what is selenium ide so selenium web driver we will be writing code using any of the given languages language bindings are available already in this website it's a open source anybody can download that libraries and can use it directly so ide is a plugin i can say it's a plugin with a browser using which i can do record and playback of any testing 
if I want to quickly do some action and test the application, I can do record and playback. Maybe I'll quickly show you. If you see here, this is a Chrome browser. And here in the plugin, I'll be able to see multiple plugins that I have. Currently, there's a plugin called Selenium IDE. So if I click this, it is opening. Welcome to Selenium IDE. Then I'll have to create a new project here. Maybe I'll give the name as test 001. That's the project name. And here I will be able to add the test cases. There is a, by default a test case. I'll be changing that to test 00, test 01 maybe. And I can start recording it by giving the URL here. So it's nothing but a first time I will record the test case. And uh, after doing whenever there is a change in the specific application, I can just play the test case and it will automatically test it. Mm, let's do something. So I'm going to test the same application. This is the URL selenium.dev. So I'll be opening the, my Selenium IDE and I'll be giving the URL here. URL is to access my application. Then in the right side there is a button called recording so as soon as i press the recording button it is opening a browser by launching the url here i can perform all the actions whatever i want so first what i'm going to do i will take you to the downloads page so i'm clicking the downloads link here i'll be able to download the grid jar file selenium grid is the one which is to execute the test cases in the remote machines. And there is something called Internet Explorer. Currently, I think Internet Explorer will be decommissioned after June or July, I think in this year. So we don't need to worry about it. Additionally, it's supporting this many libraries. Say I want to execute my code using Java. I want to develop and execute means then I have to go here and uh, verify the documentation and i can click here and download the required java it's a library jar files java libraries are called jar files same way for python or any language i can do it then i am recording by clicking to the documentation so in this documentation they are explaining about the latest version functionalities and how to implement that functionalities using Selenium. Example, if you see, go to Selenium web driver, all the required functionalities are showing here. Like, like how to go to wait and all those things. So this is the official documentation. I will suggest that everyone should follow because nowadays uh, they are making a very clear documentation for all the six languages with a sample demo code. So if you want Python, you can go here and you can copy the code, of course. Then additionally, there are some projects available. If you want, we can go and take it. These are the projects that they are having in GitHub. We can support it. So these are the actions I recorded. Now let me stop the recording by going to my Selenium ID. So I stopped the recording. So till now I, I was doing around seven different actions in this browser, it seems. So I recorded that action as well by explaining to you. And if I want to play back from the first step, I'm clicking the first step here, run the current test cases there. If I click this, so currently it's launching the URL and it's clicking the downloads. It's checking the grid and it's going to documentation web driver. It is quickly executing whatever I was doing. It's quickly executing Then it's going to project. So now if you see here, log is in the bottom, all the test case is passed. So all are showing us a green color. So this is a simple way of doing record and playback using Selenium. I think currently we have this plugin for two browsers, Firefox and Chrome. So if you want, you can try that. This is a simple way how we can create test cases. And suppose if you want this test cases to be saved in a programming language, you can right click and click the export option. 
so there are five programming language c sharp java javascript python and ruby we can export in any of these language we just can click the language name and click the export button it will download the file whatever i want so this is a quick introduction about what is selenium ide but in the real time projects where we are exactly using our thousands of functional test cases right we are using selenium web driver so it's a stable version and uh, can capable of executing n number of cases in a record fashion maybe parallelly maybe in the remote machine so when i say executing in the remote machine we can execute a thousands of cases by creating multiple machines where just need to browser need to be there and the driver need to be there so we will explain about it so how we are achieving means that is through the component or the tool called the selenium grid so it's a part of selenium which is allowing us to execute it in from a central point we can execute the test cases in different browsers and different operating systems in different machines so we will see about selenium grid in the different video for now these are all the different components of selenium we are majorly focusing on selenium web driver so we can refer more details in this website whatever i was showing you now i am going to tell you how to write a basic hello world program in selenium so before that we need to do some setup right project related setup i am going to use the programming language called java so i will be using an ide called eclipse there i will be doing the setup and uh, testing my selenium using a hello world program hello world program it's nothing but just uh, opening a browser uh, launching a new url maybe performing some action that's how we we are going to test how my selenium setup is running so first what we have to do we have to add the latest stable selenium jar file in the build path using maven dependency so this is the first step so first as i was telling we are going to use java language so i have my eclipse ide so let me open that so i open the ide and first i am going to use the maven project so maven project is a type of project uh, which is helpful to manage the dependent jar files easily so if you want to know more details about what is maven why maven project is used for testing maybe you can see in the previous video so i am going to create a maven project file new so in the other maven project will be the maven project if i type maven it is coming so for testing purpose i'll be creating a simple maven project so i will be checking this check box create a simple maven project click the next so i have to enter the name of the project as well as the artifact id so for now i'll be just typing it as hello world hello hyphen world i'll give the same name here and i will click the finish button so this is a simple way how to create a maven project so it's created then by default it will be having a file called pom.xml pom.xml is the place where i will be having my dependencies added dependencies are nothing but libraries that i am required for my project so currently this is my pom.xml there is no dependencies available so as per our slide what we have to do we have to add the latest stable selenium jar files in the build path using maven dependency so i'll tell how to add it first i will be creating a tag i i can add multiple dependencies so dependencies there is a tag here if you start typing it will be coming so i can double click and create it i think project project 
project post tag i accidentally touched it so i created it okay so after creating dependency tag inside which i can paste the dependency so how to paste the dependency if you ask me first we have to go to the maven website and uh, copy the details so maven selenium dependency if you type it here the first result will come i can go here and check the selenium versions available so currently 4.1.2 is the latest version so i have to click this and i can copy the dependency from here the, if i click it it will be automatically copying i can go to my eclipse i can paste it here so this is a simple way how to add a selenium libraries to my maven project after clicking save button i can see it's all added in the maven dependencies build path this this is called build path this is java build path this is maven build path i can edit it i can configure it whatever i do i can do it so all selenium and supported jar files are automatically downloaded from the internet and added here so first step is completed let's go back to ppt what is the second step please download the suitable web driver from respective developer website so before doing that i want to tell you what is a web driver so as we were discussing selenium is for website test automation or web application test automation you know how we can access web application obviously using any of the browsers so drivers are nothing but to create a browser instance uh, we have some executables our test cases will be actually executing on drivers so i have already chrome browser installed in my machine and i have i think edge browser firefox browser also so first we have to de decide in which browser i am going to execute my test case if you want to execute it in chrome browser you have to go to this url and i added some star next to each browser name i'll tell what it is so for chrome browser example i am going to this website whatever i give chrome driver dot chromium dot org so what that star i mentioned means first i have to verify the version of my chrome browser so i can go and click here about google chrome there i can check the version currently my version is 99 and i have to exactly download the same version from this website so chrome driver 99 i have to download if i click this it is taking me to a website and then i have to choose which os operating system in which i am going to execute so for me mac machine maybe i will download this second one and if you are using windows operating system you have to download this this is for chrome browser similarly for firefox browser there is a url here let me go to that url so this is the url there are different versions available and if you scroll down the respective os and the corresponding driver executable is there driver is nothing but an executable executable for windows machine it's a exe file for mac machine it's a bin file something like that so we can download any latest version from this list and for firefox again i have to first verify the version of the firefox so currently my version is 98.0 something so approximately 98 so i have to go to this page which is showing picture all the version we have to download for a different firefox versions so currently the latest version of gco driver is 0.30 so this is the latest version if i want i can go back and verify the old version as well by scrolling it 291 is there 29 is there so we usually use the latest stable version 
So for this version, the browser version minimum it should be seventy eight. Maximum it can be of anything. So for Chrome alone, it should be exactly equal to the same version of the browser. But Firefox it's a range. Minimum a seventy eight Firefox seventy eight version should be there. Maximum it can be anything. So I can go here and download it if I want. Similarly, next one is Edge browser. So for Edge, Edge is developed by Microsoft. So we have to go to the Microsoft website. This is the Microsoft website. And currently, I don't have Edge browser here because it's a Mac machine. So we can download it from here. Before downloading Edge browser, also we have to verify the version. Something like this. We have to go to Edge settings. You can verify the version like this. And if it is eighty ninth version, then we can go and download the respective Firefox driver for exactly same version. So if you are not giving the correct version, right? Obviously, we will not be able to execute the test case. Even at least the Hello World program, you will get an error. So it's a kind of prerequisite that you have to keep in mind before downloading web driver. We have to verify the version, and we have to download the suitable web driver. Now you can have a question like, often my browser is getting updated. You know, if you ask me Chrome. Every week they are releasing new new update. So obviously, whenever they are releasing a new update, they will be releasing a new driver as well. So we have to replace the driver in our program. So till now, we just downloaded the suitable web driver from respective website. Yes, I already downloaded it. What is the next step? It's a GIF file. So I have to extract the driver and put it in a project resource folder so i have to extract the gif file i hope you know how to extract it then we have to go to the project resource folder this is my project the here is a test resource folder maybe i can create a folder inside this called a driver drivers and here i can paste it so here there are two different operating systems majorly we are using so one is called windows operating system where you can just have the driver which is a exe file you can paste it here but suppose if you are using mac operating system so i am using so what you have to do you have to go to the finder and inside the finder i have to go to click the go button there is a folder called user local bin so i have to go to the bin folder there i have to place the chrome driver this is my chrome driver i placed already or if you want you can copy and put it in your drivers folder as well both should be okay so i'll tell the difference uh, what if i put it in bin folder or uh, i put it in drivers folder i'll tell that so this is the second step let me go back to ppt now i am ready to verify my hello world program first i have to set the path of the driver what it means so i am using a java project let me create a package and class so hello selenium is my package so package name should be small letter so i will be using selenium as a package name and inside the selenium package let me create a class class name can be anything hello underscore world is my program which i am going to use it so i created a empty class now i am going to test how my selenium setup is so as i mentioned in the ppt first we have to set the path of the driver you know right a driver can be placed anywhere currently i placed in a folder inside my project so what is the significance why i have to place this i can place it in my download i can place it in my c drive 
or I can place it in my desktop. I can use it in, from anywhere, right? So if you ask that question, whenever we are working in a project, say I am using this project, I am creating some code. Currently, I'm, I'm only using it. And tomorrow, I want to give it to my friend. Someone is using that. I'm sharing my project. In that case, if you are uh, keeping your driver in your desktop, obviously that file will not be in the same part of your friend's machine. But if you are putting it in, inside your project folder, then the same code will work. So that is the idea. You are giving correct version of the driver to your friend. Else he need to manually download and put it in his desktop and execute it. So it's a bit good practice, we, I would say. So better place it here. The first one is setting the driver path. Again, here there are multiple ways. You can set it as an environment variable. But here we usually give different path. Because today I'm using one driver, tomorrow I will change it. And day after tomorrow again, I will change it whenever there is an update in the browser. So using one Java line, you can set the path. So the line is system dot. So I'm going to execute this code, right? So let me create a main method and I'll, I'll write code inside main method. System dot set property. So I'm going to prepare, sorry, set property it is. So if you type control space, singular, it's a, it will come. What I'm going to set, maybe let me use Chrome driver, web driver. It's a web driver. And what type of web driver it is dot Chrome, it's a Chrome driver dot driver. So this is a syntax. Similarly, if you want to use edge driver, you will be typing like web driver edge dot, dot edge dot driver. If it is Firefox, you will be using web driver dot Gco dot driver. Firefox driver is called a Gco driver. And what you have to do it here, you have to give the path of your driver. So for me, path will be like slash user slash Vijay Bharti slash uh, maybe desktop slash hello hyphen world that is my project and inside that src slash test slash resources slash drivers slash chrome driver so i'm giving that entire path for me and that every line, you know, in Java ends with semicolon. I added a semicolon. If you are having your Chrome driver exe, then you have to give your path. But one thing with respect to Mac machine, so Mac operating system, you know, if I am putting my driver in my bin folder, I don't need this line at all. But for Windows operating use, system users, you should write this line. This is, should be the first line of your Selenium execution. So that you as your code will understand where you placed your driver. The path of the driver you have to give with the extension. What I mean with the extension, Chrome driver dot exe you have to give. That is very important. But for me, I already put the file in the bin folder of Mac Mac OS. So by default, Mac will understand all the executable will be in bin folder. So I don't need to worry about it. So this is a First line, which is mandatory for any Selenium, but uh, exception is a Mac machine if you keep your driver in the fin folder. Then the second line is, I'm going to open a browser. So here I downloaded Chrome driver, right? So I have to open a Chrome browser. How to create a browser or open a browser using web driver? We have to create a class for the web driver. So web driver, Maybe I have to give any name, Chrome driver, equal to new Chrome driver of, like that I have to give. So currently it will show all the errors. I have to use this word and it should be imported from my Selenium library. Okay, 
So I am changing this to the one in the web driver in the Selenium library. Also the Chrome driver is available. I have to just import it. So now what this line number 11 will do, line number 11 will open a browser using my code. That browser will be opened by a driver. Of course, why I'm opening a browser? I have to launch some URL and test the application. Now, if you ask me how to launch a URL using Selenium. So now I'm going to do all action in my Chrome driver because that is the object I created. So get, there is a function called get. Whatever the URL that I'm giving as an input to this function, it will be launched in the browser. So HTTPS colon double slash amazon.com. So this is a test URL example I am giving. So this is called hello world program in Selenium. I'm directly executing using main method just to test whether my jar file added and the driver added is correct or not. But ideally we'll be having some methods with the test ng annotations and using that annotations we'll be launching the browser. Now let's test this code. Two lines I have written. One line is to open the browser. Another one line is to launch the URL. I'll be right clicking. I'll be executing as a Java application because I'm running using Java. I'll save the file. So as soon as I executed, let me go outside. A browser is opening now. If you see here, it is opening a browser and it's a launching the amazon.com. Currently, if you see, there might be a major difference between this browser and my traditional browser, whatever I'm using. So first one is it's having a tagline called Chrome is being controlled by an automation test software. If you can see here, in the top, you will be able to see. I'll zoom in and show. So it's showing here, which means this browser is opened by a web driver. Okay, that is first thing. Second thing is this browser don't have any sign in here. If you see here, nothing is there. But by default, I signed it with my Gmail account or any other account. So that is another difference uh, how this browser is working. Web driver is working. Then third one is there will not be any plugin. It's a kind of new browser instance. No plugin will be there. No bookmark will be there. No sign in will be there. It's a kind of, kind of opening in an incognito mode. So this is how WebDriver will open. WebDriver is creating a browser instance and launching it. Whatever the action I am going to do, I can do only in this browser, which is opened by WebDriver. So I can't do any other action in any other existing browsers. If I want to do some action in the Selenium, the base thing will be first, I have to open a browser using my WebDriver. Second, I have to launch the URL, then I can do all other actions. Usually I will test the login functionality. Maybe I'll go to any screen and verify the uh, order. I mean, I can perform some order here by add, adding something. Whatever I want, I can do it as a part of my testing. So this is a quick overview of Selenium. And we just have seen how to create Selenium web driver. Here we are creating Chrome driver. Maybe you please try out with your Firefox driver or Edge driver and try opening a sample web application. So in the next video, we will see how to do the basic scripting in Selenium. Basic scripting meaning how to click a button, how to enter some text in a text box, how to click a link, drop down checkbox. Those all we will see in the next video. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.